start it. All right, there we go. Okay. And we're 300 binary tree. This is us. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's build our interface because right now we have our uh, um, simple hello world interfacey guy here, right? All right, so remember I we saw how we can take this constraint layout and I can convert the view. I'm going to convert it to a linear layout just because that's how I always start stuff. And... Um, so that's that guy. I'm going to change its orientation to vertical. <coughs> All right. So now I have a vertical linear layout there. And what I'm suggesting is we kind of have a big section for our payload and then some buttons below that. So I'll put a text view in here for our payload. And we'll uh, put the, uh, we'll make this maybe like a 50. Something like that. And then, um, can I search? Well, here we're gonna name this guy Payload TV for our text view. And then I'll go ahead and set the gravity for this guy to center. Where's gravity? There's gravity. All right, so that guy is centered. All right, so now we want to have a section for a couple of buttons that may or may not exist, right? So I'll put a horizontal linear layout in here next. And I will go ahead and put a couple of buttons in there. There's one, there's two. And we're going to go ahead and put the text on this first one to say, oop, oop. That's going to go to the left child. This is going to go to the right child, like that. And that should switch us from screen to screen to screen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we'll say that that is what our, and I'll just change the text view here to just a random number just to, you know, that's like what our payload is. Okay, so that guy is called um, Payload TV. Now I want to give these buttons names as well because I'm going to want to be able to turn the buttons on or off. Okay, um, so we're going to give, we're going to call this guy left button and we'll call this guy right button. Okay, um, and then let's go ahead and let's hook these up inside of our main activity. So I'll give myself, we'll have a private text view, and this is payload TV. Then we'll have a private button, left button, right button. We'll go ahead and set those guys up in here. So this will be this dot payload TV is equal to this dot find you by ID r dot ID dot payload TV. This dot left button is equal to this dot find you by ID r dot ID dot left button. This dot right button is equal to this dot find you by ID r dot ID dot right button. Okay. Um, now, let's go ahead and test our interface, just make sure it uh, shows up the way we want it to show up. And then let's work on the mechanics of having a, a, one of the buttons disappear and both buttons disappear, just to make sure that we have those, you know, kind of like, it's almost like before takeoff with an airplane, making sure all the flaps work and stuff and stuff like that. Okay, so we'll run this guy. <clears throat> Failed linking. Failed linking. Oh, 
Well, that's not an allowable text size. Maybe. SP. All right, so that looks all legit. So now let's try to turn our left button off. Now, ideally, we want to turn it off without having the right button slide over and take off, take up the whole uh, um, thing. So we'll look at what our options are there. But if you couldn't get it to go away and instead you just made the buttons not work if there wasn't a child, that's fine. But we're going to make ours disappear, not disappear. So let's just try doing this with the left button. So we'll say this dot left button dot. Uh, I think it's like is visible. Mm -hmm. Um, set visible, set visibility to visible dot view dot invisible. And I'm guessing if that doesn't slide it across, that probably uh, um, sets the alpha to zero. Let's see if that does. Okay. So that makes that guy invisible. Let me see if I can do this dot right button dot set alpha to 0, 0.0 f. <coughs> I bet you that does the same thing where it effectively makes it see through to the point that you can't see it. So this should make the other button go away. Uh, you shouldn't be able to click on, on either of them, but, but let's test it real quick. My experience historically, um, when you set something to alpha to be zero, it's not clickable. But we're going to have processors for these buttons anyway, so let's just go ahead and write those dudes in there. So we'll have our public void on left button clicked UV. And then we'll say um, say clicked left on that one. Copy this again. This is on right button. Okay, and then we'll go hook both of those guys up for our two buttons. All right, so this is, where's my on click? On left button clicked. On right button clicked. All right, so let's make sure that, uh, well, let's make sure nothing clicks while, <laughs> while they're uh, invisible. Clicking our log cat here. All right, so buttons are kind of in this range in here. I'm clicking around, nothing. Clicking, oh, 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 uh, right click. So you're right. With alpha at zero, it's still clickable. Um, it does not work that way on iOS. iOS, if you set the alpha to something to zero, it's, it's not clickable. So setting our button to invisible makes it not clickable. But setting our button to alpha of zero, it's still clickable. Good question. All right, so we'll use the invisible one. That uh, seems reasonable enough. <clears throat> so now what we're going to have is each version of this activity is going to have a um, binary tree associated with it. Okay, so I'm going to create a private...
binary tree two. Call this guy my tree. This is the tree that this particular instance of the activity is displaying. Okay. Now, for the first time through here, this guy is going to have our top level, uh, um, our, our top level tree. Okay. And the way I'm going to accomplish that in our scenario here is I, I could have a, a, a first page that takes you to the binary tree page mm -hmm. um, that does the, the magic here. Um, to be honest, that actually might make more sense in uh, this case. Or if I just want it to be right from the get-go, um, I would have to kind of put a, a, a switch on there. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to attempt to ask my intent for the tree. Okay, so I think this is where you probably uh, messed up with your back button. So you tried to yeah. do everything through core. Um, no, I didn't use core. Okay. Okay, well, tell me, tell me where you uh, ran into issues once I get in here. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, this dot my tree is equal to this dot get intent dot get um, should be an object extra serializable extra. You know what? I don't want to do it as a serializable extra because we didn't. Well, we did cover that actually with a, a Firebase. Firebase use serializables. Okay, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to assume that you didn't know about the serializable extra, and we're not going to use the intent. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little data structure for holding. It's effectively going to be a dictionary. Uh, so I'm going to make my own dictionary. You can do it with a built-in uh, map. Um, data type, but I'll just build my own since we don't necessarily know about the map. And what I want to do is I want to effectively hold a collection of objects that hold um, instances of main activities with binary tree two values. Okay, go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm doing stuff the way we've already done it all along. Yeah, this is just objects, normal objects. Right. So I'm just going to create a new uh, a new class here, <clears throat> and we're going to call this guy um, Tree Collection. All right, and Tree Collection is going to hold an array of. Um, um, I'm going to call it tree maps. So I'm going to create another one of these. I'm going to call this guy a tree map. Um, actually, let's just call them tree values. All right. And a tree value is going to have a um, instance of main activity as well as a binary tree two value that's associated with that main activity. So we'll say private main activity call this guy owner we'll say private binary tree two tree you'll see I'm going with this so we'll have our constructor for it, tree value. We'll take in the owner and um, what type of value is the owner? owner is a main activity. This kind of variable. 
an instance of this guy. Which yeah. screen owns it? But then they have, like, the owner has to press through the buttons on the whole thing. Well, he's an instance of that whole thing, but we don't need to think. All I want is the pointer to him to find out, am I the owner of this guy? Get my binary tree. You'll, you'll see how, how I, I'm making it work after we get a little deeper into this. This is going to take a main activity owner. This is going to take a binary tree to tree. This dot owner is equal to owner. Oh, I should have said that. Oh. They still say pwn, right? Is that a thing still? Or nobody says that? They don't say it. Heard about it. They say people, like, you don't say, like, pwn noobs anymore? Or does it people get wrecked? That's, that's like, current? Or is that still kind of old? What's the current thing to say? Get good. Get good? <laughs> really? I mean, those are only for, like, Dark Souls, actually. Yeah. Hey, so the difference between Pwn Noob, so the, the, the evolution is Pwn Noob, Wrecked, and then Get Good? Uh, you know, it's, it's just it's just it's Think of the Get Good just with this one game called Dark Souls. It's get Wrecked. Yeah. yeah. Notorious for its, like, is Dark Souls, is that the one with the Italian guys with the go-karts? No. <laughs> I've, I've played Dark Souls. <laughs> All right. Shut up! This is actually a, going to be a pretty cool solution to this. All right, so we're going to have this little object type that's going to hold two pieces of information. Now, I said I'm creating a data structure, right, which immediately kind of feels a little intimidating. But I'm just saying I'm going to create an object that's holding two pieces of information. I'm holding an instance of main activity, which I'm calling the owner of a tree, and I'm holding a binary tree, too, the tree we wrote last class. Mm -hmm. So... If I have 10 screens in my application, okay, I have 10 instances of main activity, right? So I'm saying, you own this tree. You own this tree. You own this tree. So I'm, I'm going to marry each instance of main activity to the tree that he's representing. All right? And then this thing here called tree collection is just going to hold an array of those. Does that make sense? He's going to hold an, an array of those guys. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and we're going to say we're going to have a private tree value array called the mappings. So this is where we're effectively building our own Python dictionary in Java. Just have a whole bunch of name value pairs, but where the name is going to be a memory address of a main activity and the value is going to be the tree that he owns. Okay. So we'll say public tree collection. Takes no parameters. And we'll say this dot the mappings is equal to a new tree value array. Uh, actually, we're probably not going to do this as an array because we don't necessarily know how many we're going to have. So we'll do this as a linked list of tree values. This guy will be a new, this is the built-in link list. We've, we've worked with a built-in link list already, haven't we? Uh, we didn't use it, we built a started after maybe. Yeah, 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 but I thought we, we haven't looked at the syntax before. You put it out once in class, but we haven't used it for like an hour. I get it, but I, but I have shown you this before. Yeah. This generics. Yeah. Oh, with array lists, custom array lists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, we, so we've done this. We we've done this with the built-in type. So this isn't the first time you're seeing built-in link lists. We wrote our own link list for the first part of the class, mm -hmm. but then I did show you the upgraded or use the built-in type uh, version at some point. Is that an accurate statement? So I only want to solve this in terms of things I've shown you. 
Well, otherwise we could go write our own like list. <laughs> okay, this is fine. <laughs> All right, so we're going to call this guy a tree value. All right, so this is going to, the mapping is just going to be a linked list of tree values. I don't know how many tree values I'm going to have yet, but this guy is going to be a linked list of those, uh, uh, of those tree values. Let me think about this for a second. I really don't want to do this in terms of something that I haven't shown in class yet. Correct way to do it was with through the intent. Why don't we do it? Since we've seen serializable. Did anybody do it with serializable in the intent? So we've seen it, but I'm not sure it would have occurred to you to do it that way. We did it with Firebase. To store stuff in Firebase because we need to be able to pass those uh, objects around. So let me do this then. Um, I'm just going to put this on hold. We'll just leave it. I'm not going to use these tree collections and tree values for a moment here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my binary tree too. <coughs> and we're going to make this guy implements serializable. We'll make all of his variables public. Well, serializable makes it so that you can quickly create serialized versions of uh, these objects to pass them around. Otherwise, I would have had to recreate my uh, binary tree each time and I would have lost um, objects. So this is the way that we wrote to our database by passing Firebase an object that was serializable, letting Firebase do the magic of turning it into the way it wanted to internally store it on Firebase. And then when we read it back in from Firebase, it created a blank object. So remember, we had to have a no argument constructor. That did nothing. Exists. So this can be rebuilt. That guy. All right. So we'll go ahead and... Uh, um, we made this guy serializable, we gave him all public things here, we made sure he had constructors of the right type, our, uh, um, no, we're not doing it for Firebase. We're not, serializable is a way of storing an object in a different way. I can choose to store it in Firebase, in this case I'm choosing to store it inside the intent as I pass it to the next screen. The intent is what we use to launch another another screen. I can remember put extras, I can pack things with an intent instead of using the, uh, um, the uh, core. All right, so my binary tree still exists. I just made him serializable. He still works the way he worked before. Uh, we probably didn't need all the getters and setters now since we made everything public, but you know, it's still, it still functions just fine. All right, so now what we'll do is inside of main activity, I said we're gonna have a binary tree too called my tree. And this guy is going to ask, who is my tree? All right, now I mentioned a few minutes ago that the easiest way to have done this would have been to have like a launch screen that says, you know, add a bunch of stuff to a tree. And then you can have a next screen that says visualize tree that takes you to these activities that show, you know, you can walk through the tree and stuff like that, but we'll fake it for right now where we're gonna ask the question, 
we're going to say um, this dot get intent dot get serializable extra and we're going to call this guy's name my tree and can't we also give it a default value isn't that a thing all right so we'll get the serializable extra and we're going to set this guy equal to this dot my tree All right, so it found a serializable, so I need to turn that back into a binary tree too. I think that should work. <laughs> it's possible it's not going to work that way, but let's go down this path. All right, so um, uh, so probably the most obvious way to have solved this problem for the homework would have been with a stack. That's what it would have ultimately been. All right, so this dot my tree is going to be equal to, we're going to attempt to get the serializable entry from our intent. Uh, actually, let's just check something here. This dot um, get intent dot has extra my tree. So we're going to ask a question here. We're going to say if this guy has an extra called my tree, then we'll go ahead and set my tree equal to that. Else, this must be screen one. And if it's screen one, what we're going to do is We'll go ahead and say this dot my tree is equal to. We'll build a brand new binary tree. Then we'll add stuff to it. So we're we're building out our tree for that very first screen. Okay, so then we have it. I'm not gonna make these buttons hidden or uh, anything yet. Okay, so one way or another, in uh, an instance of main activity, I either have the tree that was passed to me by hitting left or right button, we'll see that in a few minutes, or I have a, um, uh, a brand new binary tree that I set to myself. All right, so one way or another, this dot my tree has a value. It has the binary tree that belongs to me. All right. So now, what I want to do is I want to process buttons, whether or not there should be a button, whether buttons should be hidden or not. So let's go ahead and say um, public, well, we can actually make it private. Private hide buttons if needed. This is going to return nothing. And his job is just to go through and either hide a button or not hide a button. So he's going to ask if there's a left or right child. So if this dot my tree dot get Oh, do we didn't even write getters. So we actually wrote this in such a way that it should have been serializable. Oh, good. We were ahead of ourselves. So if this dot my tree dot left is equal to null, that means the tree that's owned by this version of main activity, if he does not have a left child, then we'll say this dot left button dot set visibility to invisible. If this dot my tree dot right is equal to null, that means that the tree that's owned by this particular main activity, if he does not have a right subtree, then we'll say this dot right button dot set visibility equal to invisible.
All right. <clears throat> so after we've ensured we get our tree, so get the tree owned by this main activity. Then we'll go ahead and say hide button if needed. So if this is the very first time, very first screen in our app, we'll go ahead and build a brand new binary tree, mm -hmm. the tree we had from last time. All right. If it's one of the future trees, the idea is I pass one of the children along. So he's going to be able to extract it from his uh, intent. So he has his own local ownership. All right. But then after I've made sure my tree has a value, then I'll tell this guy to hide buttons if needed. So he turns the left or right children on or off, depending on whether the current binary tree 2 has a left or right child. Okay. So now we have our on left, on right click. So if we get to one of these guys, that means we did have a right child. And what we want to do is we want to create an intent to go to another version of main activity, but we want to put an extra in there. What extra? The binary tree that is, in this case, the left child or the binary tree that is the right child. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create an intent. I is equal to new intent, passing it the current context and passing it the um, what, main activity dot class. Then we'll say I dot put extra. And the extra we're going to put is this dot my tree dot left. And we're going to name that guy, what I call it, my tree. And then we'll say this dot start activity I. Not back to it, a brand new main activity. Brand new one. So I'm creating a new main activity, a new instance of this screen. I'm, before I launch it, I'm gonna shove something into the suitcase. What am I shoving into the suitcase? The left subtree of this guy's binary tree too. And that's gonna be called my tree. So that when that activity starts, it's going to come up here to his version of onCreate. He's going to go ahead and get his buttons and stuff like that. He's going to go ahead and um, either get the version of my tree from his intent. In this case, it should, he should find one because I handed him one. And then he's going to go ahead and uh, um, set his, his tree. Now, we do need to set the payload here. So we're going to say this dot payload tv dot set text equal to we want to get the string version of this dot my tree dot payload so I just concatenate that onto the empty string so I'll set my payload text view equal to whatever number this binary tree holds and then I'll hide buttons based on whether this guy has children okay that's what this guy does here if we click the left button, that is if the left button is visible, that must mean he has a left child. What will we do? We'll create a new intent to launch a fresh copy of main activity. Main activity is just the name of one screen in our application. Okay, it can exist 50 times and each one is its own instance. I can have one that has a five in it, one that has a three in it, one that has a seven in it. Okay, so I'm gonna create an intent to launch a new copy of main activity. And then I'm gonna give that copy a variable called my tree, and I'm giving him the left subtree of my binary tree. And then I'll start that activity. So that will put a brand new main activity on top of the current one. So if I hit my back button, it'll take me right back to where I am now. It's not swapping out values inside of main activity. It's creating a new main activity, a new screen in our application. So don't try to equate main activity from home screen of app. Equate main activity with a screen in my app. And my app can have 500 screens, 
if I create 500 intents. Does that make sense? So I can have, and a lot of it, pretty commonly we'll have an app that has the same info, the same interface showing different information. That's exactly what we're doing here, right? We're showing a payload and a left and right subtree of a particular binary tree. All right, so we'll do that for the left guy. For the right guy, we'll do something almost the same. Give him the right tree. Start that. Now the caveat here is going to be we might need to do a little tweaking on how the serializable works for passing it through uh, uh, intents because I haven't done that for um, a while, but it's it's not a hard thing. Would there be an option if you explain like how you create that tree? Like if you have one like that? I mean, how I created this tree? Because I don't. Okay, here's the thing. I don't understand like the get intent dot get serializable. Like I don't just don't understand what you're saying. Okay, this is okay. Well, let's start with this. Do you understand these three lines? All right, so I intend to launch a second pay, a second version of main activity, and I'm going to slam a variable into it called my tree that is the left binary tree of myself. So we're good with that. So this line up here is now you are that second page, that second version of main activity. And you're going to say, if I have something in my suitcase called my tree. Make it more visualized. Possibly no. Uh, let me try something here. All right, so this guy here is an instance of main activity. Okay, and he has a variable named my tree. Now, in his case, he had to build a fresh tree since he is the top level. This is an instance of main activity. Retrieved from the intent. This is an instance of main activity also retrieved from the intent. So when we click this left button down here, we pack our left subtree into the intent for the next screen. That's what that left button does. The right button here, we pack our right subtree into the intent for the next screen. So this very first screen, he's going to check to see if he already has something um, called my tree. He's not. This is the first time he existed. So he has to build a fresh tree. That's what he does right here. If he doesn't already have an extra in his suitcase called my tree, he's going to come down here and he's going to build a fresh tree and set his tree equal to that. Otherwise, if he already found something in the suitcase, like this guy would find in his intent, my tree. What tree would he find? He would find the intent, uh, the tree that either the left or the right button packed in that suitcase before he created him. This left button creates a brand new intent to launch this screen down here. And in that intent, he packs the left subtree of this guy 
into the intent. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm putting an extra called my tree. And what's the value of that going to be? It's going to be the left my tree, the, the left subtree of my tree. This is the button for my right guy. He's going to pack into that suitcase called my tree the right subtree. So each of these guys, these are the same these are the same look screens, but physically different screens. This is an instance of main activity. This is another instance of main activity. This is another instance of main activity. These aren't, this isn't one instance showing different information. This is three instances each showing different information. This first instance happened to not find in his suitcase a variable called my tree because nobody sent it to him. This second instance here did find one in his uh, uh, bags, in his intent, because somebody created him in terms of their left or their right subtree. So that's what this code up here is doing. We're saying, I'm going to check. Do I have my tree in my instance, in my extras? If I look at my suitcase, do I find a my tree in there? If yes, I'll go ahead and set my local variable my tree equal to that guy. Otherwise, I must be the very first version of main, of main activity. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and create our initial tree that we're showing. <coughs> All right. So right now the question is, is are we rebuilding our uh, serializable object the correct way here? We'll check that in a, in a second. But this logically is what we want to do. We want to get the value of my tree which comes out as a generic serializable. And then I'm going to say, I know that's a binary tree too. Let's turn them back into that. We might need to do something a little bit interesting here to, to make that work, but we'll see if this flies as is. Go ahead. What do you mean by serializable? Serializable is the same thing we did for Firebase, which is a way of converting an object version of something into a text version of something. And deserializing or marshalling is turning it from text back into an object. So when we had to send our stuff from our Java program to some other storage location. So in, the, in this case, that other storage location is into an intent. In Firebase's situation, the storage location was Firebase. But I had to take my object and I had to, I had to turn it into something that was easily passed between things. So I went ahead and I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serialize this guy. And Java does this automatically for us by implementing the serializable interface and then following those rules by making the fields public and giving us a no argument constructor. And once I have that, then I can set the value of something in Firebase and it'll just pass it magically for me. Or I can add it to my, um, I can add it to my uh, um, intent as a serialized object so that it can get that to the next screen for me. And then when I retrieve it, I'm gonna have to deserialize it. I'm gonna have to bring it back, putting it back into an object type. All right, so let's see if uh, this guy works um, uh, as is. We can actually just do a quick Google search so we make a pretty good prediction. So this is effectively how do you send objects, user-defined objects, between screens in your application. And when you say serializable, how do, you know, how do they know that it's for intent and not for variable? Because that's where we put it. We added it to our intent right down here. Put extra into our intent I. So we shoved our object here along with this, uh, and we named it my tree, and we threw it into the suitcase.
Yeah, looks like we're we're putting it together the right way according to this. So let's see what we get. All right, so this is our main screen. So what's happened on this first screen is we have, uh, um, we were not able to find a copy in the intent of our tree, right? So we built our tree initially. This guy has a left and a right child. If I click left child, it should create a new page. And what it does is it grabs the left subtree of that first screen's ownership and packs it into our intent. And it's a serializable tree. And all serializable is, it's a really scary word for saying, make all your fields public and give yourself a no argument constructor. Right? I mean, it's not like we're not reinventing, I don't know, walking or something. You know, it's a pretty easy thing. We just have to follow the serializable rules, which we had previously done with Firebase. All right. Basically, we, and, and the reality is, is how does serializable, we talked about this when, uh, earlier in the semester when we we're talking about Firebase. When we say, when we let Java serialize an object, what's it actually doing? It's converting that object into what format? Uh, give me a little more specific. JSON. JSON string. Yeah. JSON is our modern cool kid for, uh, so it's the modern version of Pwn Noobs. Okay. Or, or what, what, what was one you said? What was the. Get good? Get good? <laughs> Doesn't that sound ridiculous? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, with, I'm with this one. It, I mean, it's supposed to mean like, like, I guess, you know win in a game, kill somebody in a game, or something like that. Get good? Everybody says that as a joke, but nobody actually yeah. says it. I mean, I, I, can, I can get, like, maybe how Pwn Noobs has kind of gotten a little old. Wrecked feels a little fun, right? That seems, like, that seems appropriate. Man, he wrecked them. Something like that, right? But get good? If you actually <laughs> what if I said get good, or if I said wreck? Uh, so what's the modern like cool thing instead of get good? What's the alternative? <laughs> or is it really not 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 for recording purposes? <laughs> so so society has gone downhill is what we're saying. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so wreck wrecked was as, as as PC as we were gonna get is what it comes to that. okay. All right, so now we're on our left subtree, so we're on a different copy of main activity. We're not reshowing data in the original. And this guy happens to only have a single left child. So let's show our tree here. This is the tree we're traversing, right? We started off with a five. He had a left and a right. Now we follow the left button. He only has a left. So now when I click that left, it's going to take me down and show me another three. And he has no children, right? This guy has no children. Mm -hmm. Now, if I hit the back button, what this does is it just kills off the current copy of main activity, which should take me back to the previous copy of main activity. Make sense? And this previous copy of main activity, I'm actually, if I want to go visit the left child again, I can. <laughs> it's not hurting anything. But that just created, we killed off an instance of main activity. So when I hit back, I kill it. If I hit left child, I create a brand new one past to get that left subtree. Okay. Now if I want to kill this one, now I'm back at the top level. Now I can go to my right subtree. Here's my eight. And he is a left child, not a right child. So I can go to the left child. There's my six. He has no children. I can go back. I can go back. And then if I go back again, I'm, I'm, this was the original screen of my app. So you just say go to app then? Yeah. Yeah, this app, app's dead. Done. Finito. Wrecked. Right. Get good. Did it get bad? <laughs> There's probably a whole lot of get dads. All right, questions about that? Uh, 
Um, now, what if we were not going to, so that was a pretty clean solution, right? Mm -hmm. We're just using the intent system. Every instance of main activity, he owns his own little piece of the tree. It plays right along with the idea of a binary tree as a tree of trees. Simple, right? Um, as long as you made that connection of how do I pass an object? I mean, any way you cut it, when you were doing this homework, you would have had to answer the question of how do I get a binary tree from one screen to another screen? You had to play that game, right? And then you had to throw on top of that the problem of, I kind of need multiple screens that look the same that own different, different binary trees. Make sense? All right, so that's where I was going before with uh, um, a, uh, um, you know what, this, this would have been a pretty uh, interesting way to solve it. Yeah. All right. We have nine minutes, plenty of time. Let's do this real quick. So I'm actually, instead of doing it with uh, um, instances, I'm going to build my own get extras. I'm going to use the same objects I've done already. So I'm coming into Java here. I'll go to my uh, tree value. My tree value, he's actually not going to hold a main activity. Um, he's going to hold a string called owner. And what this string is going to be is he's going to be the memory address of main activity as a string. That is, he's going to hold a activities to string. Um, his version of two string. Um, let me think, how are we going to make that? Yeah, I need it. So what I need here is I need a unique string. I need a unique string um, for the owner of this object. So I think... Yeah, I think what we do here is we're going to ask, so instead of owner, I'm going to say parent. I'm going to find my version of the tree. If So I'm, I'm one of the sibling main activities. I'm going to find my version of the tree inside of core, inside of a tree collection using special code that is my parents. Um, uh, let's see, my, my parents code, but I need left and right. Oy. Well, you know what? It doesn't actually even matter here. We can just do it with a counter. So, um, just call it the secret code. <laughs> so we're gonna have a secret code. We're gonna we're gonna hand a little secret code to every one of the page that he can then use to go look up his his little piece of the pie. All right. So that way we didn't need to make it serializable in order to do that. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's pretty funny. And we're gonna be super super uh, secure with this, where we're just going to have a counter up in core. <laughs> whenever, we need a, whenever we need a secret core, a secret code, we're just going to grab the current integer and then increment it. Make that a string. I was like, what's your secret code? Five. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. All right, but you'll see it's going to work just, just as well. Just It's where, where we pack our tree and where we retrieve our tree is all that changes. Okay. So we'll go ahead and say this dot secret code is equal to secret code. All right, so that's what that tree value thing looks like. Tree collection is going to be a um, um, uh, a linked list of tree values, and we're going to uh, you know search through that for when somebody gives me a secret code, we're going to give them back a tree. All right, so. So 
we're going to say public binary tree two um, get tree with with super secret code. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we could have a we could have a take a string secret code. All right, <laughs> what this guy's gonna do is he's just gonna run through um, our link list up here, <clears throat> looking at the secret code of each of our uh, things, and just for the sake of time, real quick. Uh, I'm going to go into my tree values. I'm just going to make both of these public. Just so I don't have to write getters real quick. Okay, so I'll say for, and we'll use a for each here just so we have practice with that. So for a tree value TV in this dot, the mappings. If TV dot secret code dot equals the secret code that was passed in, then we're going to return TV dot tree. We know we'll find it because we packed our own bags, but in the event we don't, we're going to have to return a value, so we'll return null. <coughs> All right, so this tree collection, we'll, we'll put an instance of tree collection up in core, and then every single time we... Uh, um, we pass a tree on, we're going to assign the next secret code to it and toss it up there and then have the next dude retrieve it, retrieve it. And you'll see how this works here in a second. Okay. So where's my core? Oh, I don't have a core in here. New Java class core. Public static, uh, what did I call this guy? Tree collection. Tree collection. Um, call this guy the vault. Okay, this guy's gonna be a new tree collection. <laughs> Takes no parameters. All right, so that's gonna be my vault. All right, and if we go and check the vault for our original screen. Our original code, which we, we, we have no code. Um, so you'll, you'll see what I mean by this. So I'm going to say public static current code. And this is going to be an int. This guy will start off at zero. Public static int current code. All right. And uh, so now we go back into our original version of main activity. Oh, actually, hold on. I need a... Um, my tree connection, I need to be able to add public void um, add tree. And this guy's going to take a string secret code and a binary tree too. Um, called tree. Good enough. And we'll go ahead and we're going to say. Um, this dot the mappings dot add new tree value passing it the secret code and passing it the tree so we'll just tack that on to our link list all right so that inside of main activity here when we go to get our um uh payload like actually this will be a a, a fun thing so i'll I'm going to explain it. I'm actually give this to you as your, as your assignment. Okay, um, it is like 97% done. Okay? It's it's like almost completely done. So instead of checking with our intent, is there a variable named tree? Okay, we're going to ask our intent: Do we have a code? Did somebody pass me a code? Because we could pass strings conveniently through intents, right? So I'm going to say. Did I have a secret code? If yes, then I can go ahead and get my tree from who? The vault. Sure. If I didn't have a code, what am I going to do? I'm going to make my local tree, just like I did before. Now, 
when I click on the left button, what do I add to the vault? Well, I grab the next secret code. Where's my secret code? It's inside of core. So the first secret code is going to be zero. Second secret code will be one. Third secret code will be two. I'm just going to keep incrementing this variable. So when I add that left tree, instead of putting an extra here, well, I'll still put an extra. I'll put the secret code as an extra. And I'll add to the vault the left subtree with that secret code. Does that make sense? All right, so questions about that guy. What I'm asking you to do? I want, I've given you, let's call it a good implementation of this so far, and I've given you almost the full solution of the vault version of the implementation. That's if, if you couldn't figure out how to uh, get the um, serializable thing working for the homework, this will make the, the assignment work basically identically to what how we implement in the class today. We just said, well, because we don't know what serializable is, we can't use the uh, get extra, or the put extras for our intents. So we're just going to build our own little vault and we'll just throw objects in there to our heart's desire and we don't have to worry about it. We didn't, they didn't need to be serializable. I can just put an actual object up there. Does that make sense? But I've given you like way down the line for what needs to be done for this. I mean, this could be solved in about less than five lines of code from right now. All right, so make sure you understand what we did in class today and make sure you kind of follow what we've started doing. I'll push this current version of code up. And so for Tuesday, get the vault version of this working, which is just saying I'm too lazy to learn about serializable or why should I have to bend to Android's put extra rules? I'll just build my own vault and move on with life. All right, so well, this is going to be a fun assignment. Intro to the vault. And I'm guessing, based on what you said, Blaine, you probably already have kind of a pseudo version of the vault. That you built so, as a stack? No, uh, well, kind of. Um, 